may be seated. Once again, we say yashikach to the members of Kol Rina for leading us through Kabbalat Shabbat this evening. We'll get to hear a little bit more from them through Mariv. I'm always fascinated. I say it often. The Jewish calendar is absolutely amazing. Not only is it an incredible scientific achievement that all these years ago, they were able to figure out the exact cycle of the moon and then adjust the calendar to stay in the correct seasons of the sun. That is wonderful in itself. But it's also an incredible spiritual barometer. There are times that throughout the year, the Jewish calendar is especially in tune with our personal thoughts. We're currently in one of those moments in our calendar. Just last week, we commemorated Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av, the saddest, most somber day in our calendar. Both temples in Jerusalem were destroyed, and a number of other calamities have befallen the Jewish people on Tisha B'Av. But with Tisha B'Av behind us, our trajectory now changes, looking towards the High Holy Days. It's during this period that we read a special Haftarah on each and every Shabbat. Seven weeks, seven Shabbats separate Tisha B'Av and Rosh Hashanah. And on each of these seven weeks, each of these seven Shabbats, we read a special Haftarah, all from the prophet Isaiah, known as the Haftarot of Consolation. And tomorrow morning will be the second one in this line of seven that we'll read. Tomorrow morning's Haftarah that Ryan will chant begins with these words. God has forsaken me. My sovereign has forgotten me. What a statement. God is gone. God has left us. God has left the Jewish people. What hope is there now? That is what the prophet Isaiah was asking. That was the feeling of the Jewish people after the destruction of the temple. They felt totally hopeless that there was, in fact, no future ahead of them. Though that's the verse, the first verse. The rest of the Haftarah offers a very different idea. It changes this to an idea of hopeful promises and future redemption. Much of the Haftarah, of this beautiful piece of liturgy, consists of vivid, expressive, and long-winded metaphors expressing the relationship between God and the Israelites. Can a mother forget her babe or stop loving the child of her womb? Isaiah asks that question tomorrow morning, referring to the notion that, in fact, God could never forget, could never abandon the Israelites. The poem then goes on, continuing through phases of marital metaphors, making Isaiah's point very clear. The Jewish people and God are like two people in a very intense relationship. In fact, we just sang that in the Chadodi as well. And in the final verse of the Haftarah tomorrow morning, Isaiah returns to the image of God and the Jewish people as two companions who've been through a rough and bumpy history, but have reconciled and are now prepared to face the future together. Truly, the Lord has, the, the Lord has comforted Zion, comforted all of her rooms. Isaiah preaches and concludes with a promise of impending joy in Zion. Gladness and joy shall abide there, thanksgiving and the sound of music. The Haftarah tells us that even after the Jewish people experience the lowest of all places together, watching the temples destroyed and burned, a feeling that God had indeed abandoned them at that moment. They are comforted throughout the Haftarah that God will return and God will be by their side in the future. 
as our calendar moves from Tisha B'Av, the saddest moment in our history, to the joy of Rosh Hashanah followed by Yom Kippur, our spiritual selves face the same trajectory. We are now about to begin that process of introspection, of tshuva, to dig deep into ourselves and examine what we need to change, what experiences we can improve in the coming year. And at the same time, we'll begin to feel, some of us, when we do it right, that same fear and vulnerability that Isaiah expresses. What happens if God forgets me? That fear, what if we uncover something so deep, so painful, we may feel that it prevents us from doing that work. That in fact, God may there then turn the back on us. But the Haftarah reminds us as well that God, even in that moment of despair of the Jewish people, God didn't abandon them. Even if it felt like that for a moment. And the same too applies to us. Even our darkest and most difficult situation, we're reminded that God loves us and God will not forget us. The hard work actually lies with each of us in the weeks and little more than a month ahead before the High Holy Days. Because in just over a week from now, we actually enter the month of Elul, the final month of the Jewish calendar, which is marked by every single morning except for Shabbat, the sounding of the shofar, those blasts of tekiah, shivarim, truah, tekiah again, urging us, waking us up, that the work to begin to improve who we are is just ahead. When we show up on Rosh Hashanah, that's not the beginning of the process. It's actually supposed to be nearing the end of the process of tshuva. So as we anticipate preparing for Rosh Hashanah, each of these haftarot over the next few weeks remind us that we can, in fact, dig into our souls, uncover what it needs, what needs to change, and at the same time, not be fearful of what we'll uncover. We're urged, don't pull away. Pull out what truly needs to change. It may be challenging for us, but be reminded, God will be there right by your side, reminding us that God is full of compassion and love. And no matter what we uncover about ourselves, as the Haftarah tomorrow says, and we'll say over and over over the next few weeks, God will always take us back with love. There's hope for the future. The days will be brighter. God will be our, by our side. We just have to do the work to grow. If we're ready to grow and change, God will not abandon us. Shabbat Shalom.